Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm going to be going over the Double Bell SR25 from evec.com. I'm pretty damn excited to go over this one because I have not taken apart one of these SR25s yet. I've worked on the SEMA, the Golden Eagle, and the A&K so far, and this is one I haven't touched yet. So that being said, we're going to be doing a tune-up on this thing as an excuse to get inside this guy and see what's inside. All right, let's do this. Okay, so first things first, I got a before tune-up test on it done. So, and this is the results, min, max, and average. And then I went ahead and tested with point fours to see what kind of joules it got. Looking up here, that's, that is with two O's, which comes out to be about 1.6 joules. And when I put point fours in it, the joules dropped a little bit, indicating that uh, this, is, this rifle is not volume for point fours yet. And I'll show you how I'll do that. All right, got the gearbox out, starting off with uh, the hop-up system. I wish companies would do this more often, put an indicator on their hop-up to which way is up and down, and it's a rotary type. As far as the bucking goes inside this thing, it's your traditional type with a little nipple that comes down, and then this is a, uh, all right, from end to end inside, so there's about 500 millimeters. According to the website specs, uh, this barrel's diameter is 602 out of the box. Moving on to the gearbox. As you can see, we got eight millimeter bearings here and all the way around. Found out that this is a spring quick change system. Here's the spring guide here. It's very much like the SEMA Platinums where you screw in the spring guide through the back of the receiver. I personally really like this idea because it makes it easier taking apart and swapping out uh, your springs. And one thing that Double Bell does better than SEMA so they put a lot better threads. The problem with SEMA's threads is that they like to chew up the internal threads on the receiver. Back to the gearbox, you'll see that we're ported. This would explain why our jewels dropped when we went to point fours. So as soon as we swap this cylinder out to a full, the jewels should go up with point fours. It has a metal nozzle straight from the factory, which is pretty awesome. I'll be checking to see how well that holds seal. Of course, you got the gross Tamiya. I would swap this over to Dean's as soon as possible so you get the most out of your airsoft gun. Decent wiring, not too bad. With that out of the way, I'm going to get this gearbox open. We're going to check out everything inside. All right, guys, moment of truth. Here we go. Ooh. All right, I'm going to go over every individual part, mainly just the, the gear set and the cylinder set. We'll start with the compression set. Starting with the piston, the piston head itself is very much like the Max piston head. Piston itself is polymer, obviously, and with a full metal rack. Better than A and K in my opinion, so this is all right if you're gonna keep this airsoft gun uh, under 450 FPS with point two. Seems to be uh, ball bearings inside there. Spring is uh, linear. If it was me to make it easier on the airsoft gun itself, I personally use a non-linear springs. It's just easier on the airsoft gun while it's cycling. The cylinder head, all polymer, pretty basic. Got your single O-ring there, brass nozzle. Nozzle is aluminum. It's kind of an interesting design and I'll tell you why. Major plus, it's got an a internal O-ring and it seals pretty decently. Not perfect, but decently. And then it's milled inside in such a way that, you see that little lip there? That's basically like a like a step. And it goes up like this. The nozzle slides in and stops right at that lip there that you see in there when in the nozzle cycles back. I think that's to help keep it straight or whatever, but I'll tell you this right now, the nozzle, it wobbles pretty bad, and I personally hate wobbly nozzles, so I think uh, we can still retain, keep this nozzle, and swap out to a better cylinder head that has a bigger outer diameter, and one of those cylinder heads would be the Slong cylinder head that I sell at wishtech.com, and I think it would fill up that gap, the wide tolerances inside this nozzle here so it doesn't wiggle as much. Getting rid of that wiggling will increase the FPS consistency in this airsoft gun. And now the cylinder, it's freaking steeled, man. Uh, I don't think it's a coated uh, cylinder whatsoever, but uh, what I don't like it's, is that it's ported. Usually with SR25s, in my opinion, you're planning on using point fours, and if you plan on using point fours, you don't want to pour it or else uh, you get jewel drop off. That way you get all that air volume to push a BB that heavy out the barrel. One thing I really want to note that the tablet plate is leaning back a little bit the front of it. It's not necessarily a good thing. I mean, it's it, the gun works just fine, but what that's going to do is it's not going to have the nozzle all the way forward and sealing up against that bucking as much. And also it's going to make your nozzle point upwards. That being said, the tablet plate isn't all that great, but it, it'll get the job done. 
you can easily fix that lane by uh, heating up the corner right here with a heating torch and then carefully bending it forward and then letting it cool down. Here's what the shell looks like with everything out. Bearings, yay. Cut off lever, then of course your normal switch assembly. I actually have a customer interest in this rifle. As far as recommendations go so far is pay run electronic treatment, full cylinder, change out the cylinder head, and hopefully this nozzle is good enough. Probably do us some measurement. We're gonna stick with this gear set, except for the, the bevel and the spur gear. I'm gonna throw these out. It's because we only have four latches and we plan on doing pre-cocking. I wanna use a rocket or SHS bevel because it has six latches. As you can see on here, there's only four. The more latches you have, the easier time your airsoft's gonna have when it comes to pre-cocking. And then the reason why we're reusing this gear is because I absolutely hate SHS and rocket sector gears. And reason being is because they always, for some reason, put the tablet plate pickup pin too much forward and it causes tablet plate PME. And in order to fix that, you either have to put a really strong spring in and slow down your airsoft gun cycle speed, like put a 7.4 in it and keep it at 7.4, or you short stroke it by two teeth on the rear so that the piston gets released sooner and get to battery before the tablet plate gets picked up first. The end result is, is your FPS, it just goes all over the place. And I'm gonna go grab the upgrades for this gun and start putting it together. Okay, so the customer went ahead and uh, they paid for this rifle. So that being said, we talked about what upgrades we're gonna go with this guy. For starters, and these are the parts that we're gonna be reusing. The sector gear, piston, the tappet plate, and I'm gonna fix that lean. And then of course the spring guide. I'm gonna reuse the stock spring just for funsies and see if we can get the FPS up to 450 with the stock spring. And then I'm gonna switch it out to a regular pitch spring. So moving on to the upgraded parts. We're gonna put a Payrun version two hybrid, T238, 39K brushless motor. We might use this bucking in case we have issues with the maple leaf fitment on the stock barrel. That's one thing I forgot to mention. We're gonna reuse the stock barrel. We might cut it down to length if needed for 40 gram BBs. And we're gonna use a EPS 24.5 millimeter nozzle, an EPS version two cylinder head, long. It's extended for uh, this really long nozzle to keep it nice and centered as it's articulating back and forth. Bugatti's SR25 cylinder, SHS bevel and spur gear. Uh, and the reason why I'm going with these gears is because it's gonna help make this gun shoot quieter in terms of gear wine and the teeth between these gears and the pinning gear on, on these T38s mesh pretty damn good so we should have a good result from there. We'll be taking off the this delayer chip and putting on an EPS delayer chip and as you can see the front of it has been trimmed down so there's not a leading edge on the delayer chip and the reason why I'm doing this is because this thing is going to cycle a lot faster even with the 7.4 and I want to avoid premature engagement of the tappet plate and seeing how forward this guy is, it increases the chances of that happening. So using this guy will reduce that and still allow 0.4 gram BBs to feed just fine into this gun. Moving on, I'm going to be putting a Max Pro hop up in this thing, Maple Leaf Super Macron. But if it doesn't work, then I'll move on to this guy. This is my other tried and true. This is similar to Maple Leaf and it does have a R-Hop patch like piece to it. And then for Nub, I'm not going to use the one out of the, this hop-up. I find that the Modifies flat nub does a better job at keeping the hop nice and flat when it comes down when you apply. And I'm going to go ahead and get to it. Alright, first things first. I stripped the gearboxes completely down for fitment test. Uh, for starters, I uh, took the Payrun MOSFET out of its packaging. This is the very first fitment check that I decided to do. I placed this sucker in here, and guess what? It won't sit flat, all because of this guy right here. And it mounts up to that screw hole there. While I have this in my vise, I'm going to radius the gearbox up here, because we want to get rid of those shop corners, so that this gearbox doesn't crack. So I'm going to be doing it on both sides. Okay, got the mods done. I had to grind a little tower right there a little bit, so that the screw, when I tighten it down, it holds this pay run nice and flat and tight against the gearbox so it doesn't wiggle. So before I uh, put the bearings in, I'll get the bearing holes prepped by cleaning them with acetone and uh, using a Q-tip, getting them super clean, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna super glue them in place, and I also use the acetone to clean the surfaces of the bearings as well and get them in. 
Okay guys, so got the bearings gl glued in and just so you know these bearings are called ESO bearings and these are the highest quality of bearings you could possibly buy and they're damn near indestructible. And there's another reason why I like using them for a lot of builds including DMRs is this. I barely flicked it. What that's going to do is that since we're creating less friction in the gear train by putting these bearings in, it's going to pull less power from the battery because it's going to require less amperage pull from the motor. The motor's going to, not going to have to try as hard to spin these gears. That, and uh, because these are high quality bearings, they're precisely made, so that means your gears are going to sit more level inside the gearbox, so the teeth will have even contact with each other. And if you're wondering, why do I have a, a solid bushing here? Well, this is for warranty reasons. In case of a mistake from either myself or the customer, the bearing always fails right here. If there is a premature engagement incident, rather through a jam or improper usage of the airsoft gun, it's always this one that fails. And I've done enough airsoft guns that I found it's this one that fails, even with an ESO. Time to install. Now it's time to get the motor height adjustment. Hee <laughs> hee. Shimmy's done. Yeah. Okay, so amongst my checks as I'm putting this thing apart, uh, one of the first things I do is check for air engagement. And upon doing that, when I spun this gear, it actually was hitting the cylinder. When I put the other side of the shell on, it was still hitting the cylinder. So what did I end up doing is pulling the cylinder out. I threw it on my lathe over there and shortened it down a little bit so that the teeth missed the cylinder and hit the piston. All right, so I discovered something new with the double bell sector gear to the, the OEM piston from double bell. The meshing between the sector gear to the double bell piston is quite notchy at the beginning and then there's quite a bit of pressure or resistance of when I'm pulling back the piston and it isn't the rails, it's because of the meshing between the teeth of the sector gear and the piston. I threw in a retro arms piston with an EPS metal piston head and the result is a much smoother meshing between this, the factory sector gear and the piston teeth and not only that it is also an upgrade and I trust these pistons to handle all the way up to four joules and so we're going to go with that on this build. Okay I was just doing my checks with uh, Max Pro Hop Up with the EPS nozzle and how the tappet plate behaves and to see if we will have clearance for the BBs into the chamber and also if we have enough length to seal up against the bucking. And when I did my tests, found out that I needed to take out this washer that is typically in these M4As between the outlet and the hop-up itself. It usually goes right in front of my fingernail. And I took this out. I got the tolerances I was looking for with the nozzle to the hop-up unit. So we should have good feeding and good seal from the nozzle to the hop-up. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the nubs. Nub of choice that I'm going with, taking this guy out with a little fat eraser and putting the Omega nub with the piece that comes with the hop-up unit that fits it perfectly. It will keep it from moving side to side and not only that but uh, with the Maple Leaf Super Macrons, this piece I found is a little too wide and what happens is it creates uneven pressure when it comes down when you apply hop-up so you get the issue of your BBs veering off to constantly to the left or the right just depending on how this sits on top of the bucking and it's all because this is a little too wide and what you want to use instead is the omega nub and put it on this guy uh, it doesn't move side to side and it stays perfectly centered as it gets applied and you get it more of a uh, straighter hop on every shot and it comes straight down so the TDC doesn't get messed up whatsoever so I'm going to throw this in it is now sensor testing time okay so for this test we'll have the gearbox inside the receiver with the both rear and middle body pins in to simulate that it's together. The instructions say to do this so to get the most accurate testing. So first things first I did modify the safety lever for when this is on safe it doesn't jam the trigger and works great. So now we'll go up and check the sensor light. So safety works. So we'll spin this guy to see if it detects the sector gear, and it does. When it blinks, that means it's detecting the sector gears. So that light should turn blue when I put it on semi. 
and then yep and then it starts blinking yellow as in uh, it is now in semi and then i'm going to pull the trigger should turn purple which is good and then when i flip it to safe the semi it should flip to red light uh halfway between semi and full auto okay it just turned red we're about center and then we'll double check to make sure it goes back to blue when we go uh, back to semi should do it about halfway so here we go yeah it's, yeah, it's a little bit past halfway but it's close enough there's going to be a little bit of play of, on the selector plate going back and forth. All right, so uh, sensor check is all good. So the MOSFET is ready to go, and we just got to assemble the gearbox now. Before I put everything all back together, one thing I almost forgot to do was shorten up the barrel to about 470 millimeters for 40 gram BBs. Because with these SR25s, you keep it at the 509 length there's so much air braking going on that it's going to cause a premature engagement of 4.0s i usually have to shorten up the barrel and uh, this should prevent any premature engagement with the long ass stroke on these sr 25s so i'm going to get it all back together now we'll see how she chronos and before we chrono i'm going to do a quick test before i put it all back together because i almost forgot to do that and see if she cycles fine here we go, semi-auto. Not bad, full auto. That's what the 7.4 LiPo battery and the motor turned down in speed a little bit, just to ensure that this thing is not gonna PME with four O's. Okay, so it's cycling great. Now I'm gonna put it together with the barrel all nice and cut and yeah, 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 hooray. Okay, I got it together at the bare minimum, and I'm about to go to the chrono. But before we do that, guys, hit that like and subscribe button to get this video out to more people just like you. And it helps me out as a YouTuber to expand and do more content such as this for you guys. Now let's get that chrono done. Finally, we can chrono. All right, so I'm going to just do 10 shots in semi-auto only and see how the consistency is with point twos. I don't, I don't think it's going to be all that fantastic but anyway yeah, not bad uh, lost a little bit of fps but that's to be expected since uh we did shorten up the barrel for four o's and that's to increase your air volume ratio comes out to be about 1.5 joules on two o's so when we go to four o's that should jump not sure how much but we'll find out all right i'm gonna switch to four o's and see what what happens all right i got four o's in let's see what she gets gonna do 10 shots again and here we go yeah the jewel creeped a little bit this double eagle sr25 is good to go for four o's uh, the jewels did not drop off which means that this thing is shooting great for four o's this is uh, what it's tuned for now you can even see the consistency on the shots not bad for an aeg previously shot 280 fps on four o's and one for four jewels and if we look at the results now we're at 1.59 and all we did was put a different cylinder in and shorten the barrel to increase the air volume ratio so that the jewels didn't drop off with four o's this thing shoots the best with four o's so i'm going to put the rest way together guys if you like uh this video like and subscribe and uh yeah see you guys on the next one thanks for watching